autofocus. That's more better. Hey, uh, what's going on, ladies and gentlemen? I, uh, in two weeks from today, I will be on my second day of hunting in Kentucky. So I thought I would do a quick rundown of all of my 2022 whitetail hunting gear. Clothes, hunting equipment, mobile equipment, all of it. So let's do that, let's do that. Before we get going too far, I just you just need to know that this is just the stuff I'm using for this year. You don't necessarily need it. It's just the stuff that I'm using. This is an accumulation over years. And this is how I've refined it for this year. So don't feel pressured to go out and buy a whole bunch of stuff and spend a ridiculous amount of money. First things first, we're gonna start with our feet skis. We're gonna we'll go from our feet skis through the clothing up, and then we're gonna break into the fun stuff, which is like the bow and all those good things. We're rocking some lacrosses. Uh, I've had these lacrosses for quite a while. I can't remember the specific model of these lacrosses. These are their non-insulated pair. And then I've also got a pair of insulated ones that I just got at an auction this spring, which I've got to patch up a little bit here. But basically, I've been using lacrosses, and people ask me saddle hunting all the time. Like, oh, how do you hear feet and blah, blah, blah. They hurt all the time. I feel like these lacrosse boots, they've got a rigid enough sole, and there's not much flex in, like, your ridge that they don't really bother you at all on a saddle platform. And I do like a rubber boot, especially when in normal years it's like wet. <laughs> normal years it's wet, it's dry this year. Another boot that I do wear though, from time to time, if I know it's gonna be dry, are these Crispies. And these are the Wyomings. I bought these from my cousin. Crispies are meant as a mountain boot, hiking boot, and they are definitely rigid on the bottom. So that's for long walks, or if you really think that you're gonna need to be a stiff sole, for all day sits in a saddle type kind of thing. That might be something along the ranges you need to look for is a really nice hiking boot. So that's boots. Next thing, pants and bottoms. So as a base layer for bottoms, um, when it gets a little bit chillier, I run these first light furnace pants. These are the three quarter zip and these are the ones that you can like take all the way off if you really wanted to. I like these a lot. Thing about these though, they are fragile. They're fragile. Uh, the first season, crotch is gone. So other than the crotch just being kind of worn out, still a great pair of thermal pants. And what I usually pair those with are these Black Ovis Granite Peak, I think they are. These are the Black Ovis Granite Peak pants. And I've had these definitely for going on three years. And I tell you what, these pants are one of the most underrated pants. I'm not sponsored by these guys or nothing like that, but they're very underrated. I've worn them for work for years. Um, on top of hunting in them, I've probably got, if there's 365 days in the year, I've probably worn them for at least 300 days in the year. Two things that I would say that if I was Black Ovis, I would work on is the stitching on the pockets because I had to stitch up the pockets because they frayed out quick. And in the crotch, same thing. Crotch actually blew out pretty quick. Uh, that, maybe it's a personal problem. I don't know. These are the Cabela's Guide Pants. And then they've got like a wind membrane in there, really soft exterior. So this is gonna be my ball freezing cold type kind of pant right here. And those are the, <clears throat> basically the three things I run for my pants. Black Ovis, 95% of the time pants with a base layer if it's a little chilly. And then well, now I'm gonna switch to those buggers when it's cold, it's cold. I just got this this year, just like a few weeks ago for when it's really, really hot, I have this four low hoodie and it's got a really nice pattern to it. It does remind you of like say a Sitka or even the first new first light patterns. It's very light colored. It's very um, not, uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? It will limit the, eliminate the silhouette. So that's kind of what I was going for. Something light, something I might be on the ground uh, if I'm spotting stalking or if I'm in the tree, you know? So this is my really, really hot weather type kind of unit right here. When we get a little bit chillier, I have the kiln. From First Light, the kiln, this one I wore the majority of time for turkey season. Uh, I would pair it with a vest, and then when I would get too warm, I would just be wearing this. The kiln, for me, is good. Um, into the 60s, I can be wearing this, down to the 40s if I'm moving, and a little chillier even, maybe. Uh, it's a base layer, but it's nice that it's camo, because that's what I wear it for. Hoodie, always have a hood. I always have a hood. This is the Solitude Vest. And it's not the 2.0 or the new one or whatever with a windproof membrane in it. 
These are thick enough that I find that I don't need some windproof membrane in these things, especially in my core area because with the next piece I have, it really keeps me warm. So I'm a vest guy. I like my arms to have free movement, especially for archery. That's my focus is free movement, spot and stalk. Or if I'm in the tree, you know, being able to draw and be able to lift my elbow up a little more or something over a branch if I necessarily need to. So we got the vest, Solitude Vest from First Light. The thing I was talking about that keeps my core warm, this is another Black Ovis piece. This is their Puffy. It's got some grease stains on it from fishing up in the UP. This sucker is maybe my favorite piece of clothing for hunting for warmth and just the versatility behind it. You can probably hear, it can be a little noisy, but when you pair it with a vest and you just have your arms that stick out, man, it's great. Granted, water does not uh, go well with down. So when it starts raining, we have another raincoat from Black Office. And I've only had to use this a couple times because limited time hunting, I haven't had the chance to really hunt in the rain, but I have this just in case. This is the Black Ovis raincoat, really nice color. Uh, it looks really nice and dapper if you were gonna use it just as a, a windbreaker or something like that. So there's the pants, the boots, and the shirts or upper layer. Let's get into like some extra items for warmth. Gloves, we got a problem with the gloves. Um, I'm missing one right now. These are the fish monkey gloves. These things are warm. And I don't like to have my fingers covered up unless it's ball freezing cold, obviously. But even when it's cold and I'm moving around, all I really ever need is these fingerless gloves. And I use them for ice fishing all year round. I use them for deer hunting. These have stood the test of time fantastically. Usually you'll get down in here. This is where you start seeing fraying problems with gloves, but the way they built this leather up with it, it just really helps on the durability side. And when you're climbing sticks or grabbing branches and everything else. So fish monkey gloves, and then if it gets really cold, I love a muff, a hand muff. Um, this is the first light hand muff. I would just recommend getting a muff because it is such a bonus. Archery season, I'm always focused on archery. So if I've got this glove and my hand's a little bit chilly, fingers are a little cold, and I just slide this into the muff with a little hand warmer in here for say five minutes, they're, they're roasting, roasting. So these are awesome, hand muffs, big bonus. When the wind is really hollering, and uh, it's cutting through you and it's blowing down your neck or under your neck and maybe not so much if you've got a beard bigger than mine. Um, I like a neck gaiter and this is a Stormy Cromer neck gaiter, wool neck gaiter. This thing is the warmest neck gaiter I've ever worn in my entire life. It fits really well. Let me show you. Comes right up to the chin perfectly. It's, it's rigid enough that it just stays up and seals in from the chin bottom of the ears, back of the neck down. So this is like your area where heat will tend to escape when you're cold. So if you've got this paired with a jacket, whew, you're sweating boy, you're sweating boy, boys and girls. So that's my, my like three items when it gets really cold, gloves, hand muff, neck gaiter. Now we're gonna get into the nitty gritty and the fun stuff of things. For the pack I'm running this year, trophy line case, uh, not the case, plateau pack. I do have the case. I'm doing, what I'm doing here is my primary, when I normally run everything uh, for the majority of the year, is the plateau pack. The reasons why I like this, I'm somewhat of a minimalistic person. I don't like to have a whole bunch of stuff with me. I don't like to have just nothing with me. So I find myself right in the middle. I think a fanny pack in general is a perfect middle grounds type of pack. Another reason why I like it is because the ventilation on the back side, you don't have an entire pack covering up your back. If you're walking in big miles, and you're just dripping sweat, just dripping. I mean, granted, you're still gonna sweat no matter what pack you're using if you're walking in long distances, but this will at least help ventilate. What I have paired with this pack right now, I've got a little 3D printed stick hauler for when I'm climbing up the tree, for when I'm saddle hunting. And then I've also got something that, I don't have it. I usually have a camera clip on here, so my camera would clip right onto my shoulder. So that's the pack. We're rocking the Plateau Pack from Trophy Line. It's my number one go-to pack. We are talking sticks, platform. Again, we're rocking with Trophy Line. These are their double step sticks that's paired with like a Novix, so it's Trophy Line Novix uh, uh, team up. Um, I usually run three sticks. The thing I'm running three sticks for is usually I have aiders. I usually either have a double step aider on the bottom or a single step. Um, I'm switching it up this year. I'll get that product here in a minute, but this is mainly the what I run three sticks and I'm using daisy chains. So you see these how these are wrapped up. Um, this is what I like. I straps are perfectly fine. 
These daisy chains are just my preference because there's no metal. That's my kind of thing is no metal. I don't like metal. So these are the sticks, love them. Been using them for about two years now. Previously, I've been saying that my favorite platform was probably the Mission, and it's still right there. But for the, the platform that I like to carry with me when I don't know what I'm doing, the majority of the time, like if I'm just going to try and run a gun and pick a tree, we're running the EDP from Trophy Line. It's the everyday platform, so it kind of fits into that category of running and gunning and not knowing what tree you're going to get into. Plus, it's just a tickle bit lighter. So sometimes I go out into the woods and I'm thinking I'm only going to be going in a half mile. Sometimes I end up way further than what I was expecting to, and having just a slightly lighter platform does help. Now, with that said, if I know where I'm going and say it's private property and I know I'm going to sit all day, I do like the mission platform better just because it's a bigger foot room. You can stand on the thing almost nearly like a tree stand and it's great. But I really like this EDP. This is probably going to be the one I use the most of the time. Um, instead of the belt system, I'm running Sam's or the Amsteel guys uh, USA Pro Amsteel system on here. This is the Aider. It may look like a mess, but it's really not. So your foot would go into here, and you can adjust the tightness around your foot with this string, and then you can also adjust the entire length of this Aider. It's called the Universa Aider. I don't know if he's released it quite yet. I might be putting this video out before he actually releases this item, but that's what this is. And then the other item I'm using, that's Amsteel. Big Amsteel fan, if you can't tell. Super strong, um, super light. This is the like uh, gear gear hanger also from Sam the Amsteel guy um, I've been wanting one of these for a while again finally got my hands on one through Sam I wanted to switch things up and actually get to a gear hanger this is what we're working with right here I think I'm gonna really like it if you are a Midwestern guy and you do not use a bino harness and I mean not like just the straps that let your binos hang here if you don't use a bino harness you're missing out on the whole game this is the one I'm rocking this year and what I like about it is this hard top and then how it folds out and you can actually put your phone in there. It all folds away from you and it's all magnetized. So that's really huge. I know it's probably really hard to see me. Um, you've got a rangefinder unit, which I'm still rocking. My Bushnell rangefinder from years ago. I mean, I don't even know what the heck it's called. It was a hundred dollar combo with, the, with uh, binoculars. Binoculars died pretty quick. Rangefinder's still cooking. What I like about the bino harnesses is the customizability. So yes, I've got a rangefinder here, but I got another pocket I could be putting my tags in. Yes, I've got my release right here, but I could also be putting more stuff in here. Actually, there is more stuff in here. One of my secret little weapons that I love so much is um, a little handsaw, just for some really small limbs. This is the outdoor edge handsaw that we actually got while we were in Montana last year, and I have used the living daylights out of it. I keep that in the pocket of the range find, or of the bino harness. You got more pockets on the side for say like a wind checker or something like that. It's very accessible at all times. So if you have little items like your release or your little saw or a range finder, or you want hand warmers into the side, or you want to put your little um, wind checker in the side here, this is what's really nice about it is because everything is right here at hand level and it's always with you. For the saddle this year, we're running the Venatic from Trophy Line. Um, super light, I still like the Covert, I'm keeping it, I ain't getting rid of it, so nobody has to buy it from me, okay? So the Venatic, we're rocking this sucker. We've got an Allen gear hauler on the back. We have got two tech core ropes. And then we've got a, this one's, this unit's pretty nice. This is from Genesis 3D printing. This is to hang my bow on my side while I'm in the saddle. Uh, and then we've got a, another 3D printed unit from Innovating the Outdoors for the sticks. So when I'm climbing up now, instead of having a, a piece of twine or whatever, uh, where my sticks are flailing from side to side, I'm using this, this 3D printed unit. The stick locks right in there and it's not going anywhere. So that's the saddle. I haven't done really any customizability to it other than take the carabiner off and then I just direct tie a Schwabish hitch into it. I like that better. It's all preference. That's the unit right there. And I do enjoy it. Okay, the beloved beauty, the tool of use for killing, uh, for harvesting, whatever you want to call it. This is the Darton Spectre E32. So this is their 2022 model. Uh, they've beefed up the riser. They've made the limb pockets wider. They've made it so you can adjust your draw all the way through. And this thing has shot excellent for me. I've got this paired with basically all red line items. So we've got a red line backstab in the front. 
And then we've got a red line. This is the RL2, which we just posted a video about this recently. And I'm digging this RL2 probably more than the RL1. Don't know why. Maybe it's just because it's a little bit smaller, a little bit more compact. And then we've got the RL3 arrow quiver. Digging that sucker. The whole unit comes in when I'm weighing it. It's a little bit heavier of a bow. And with everything on here, we're just close to seven pounds. So nothing extreme. This bottom piece for my kickstand, this is from Amazon. This is the only one that I could find that was wide enough for how they adjusted the limb pockets and limb to be so wide. I do enjoy this one. Actually, it was at a 3D shoot. I talked to a gentleman there. I think his name was Doug, and he pointed me in the direction of this. So that's really nice. That'll just end up staying in the pack for the most part. But uh, if I know that I'm going to be spot and stocking or if I'm going to be sitting on the ground, it's always going to be available to me. And then we're rocking the X Impact Arrows by Black Ovis paired with AEE hybrids, which is their like max stealth. So it's the hybrid stealths. And we've got a four fletch with a wrap. So we've got a glory knock, glory knock on the back end. And then we have got the solid 100 or 125 grain iron wheels on the front. I've been shooting these iron wheels before they become this fad of things because we got them for Western hunting. And uh, uh, it's just, they're really nice rock solid broadheads, but they are expensive. So don't lose them. Key to not losing them is one, don't lose your arrow. And number two, put a little bit of Loctite on the threads or some uh, wax so they don't come unscrewed as the deer is running to grass because I have had that happen to me. I think this is going to be probably one of the best setups that I've run. Uh, last year I ran the Rampage arrows, which were a five millimeter. These X impacts are four millimeter. So it should zip right through the ammo, no problem. It's just a little less friction. And yes, Four millimeter is a little less friction than a five millimeter. It's just science. So that is now we've covered the boots, the pants, the shirts, jackets, the saddle, the bino harness, the backpack, the platform, the sticks, the little am seal stuff that I run, and the bow, arrows, drop away, all that good stuff. Between the crickets and the sparrows in the barn, it's just ridiculous. All right, that pretty much wraps everything up that I, uh, for this year's lineup, basically. Two things I did forget. One, the binoculars I'm running on are an Alpine, they're a Leopold, Leopold binoculars. And uh, for my release this year, I just finally switched after 10 years of my previous release, and I'm using the Stan Onyx thumb release. Been wanting to go to the thumb release, finally got one, ready to rock. So, I hope you enjoy this year's lineup for the 2022 Whitetail Gear Dump and the stuff that I'm using. So, all of, obviously things are always subject to change, but. Appreciate y'all watching, and until next time, I'll see you in the next one. Appreciate you. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Appreciate you.